It's typical scenario, the world is overrun by zombie outbreaks, with each passing day the streets becomes more crowded with monsters, food becomes scarcer and the outbreak spreads to new areas as the zombies hunt for fresh human victims. They can be hungry too. Terminal Zombie Survivor is, as title suggests, a zombie survival simulator that takes its subject matter seriously. One or two wrong moves can be deadly. You will need to search for food, water, equipment, knowledge, fuel and more as you try to reach a place called Terminus. But is it truly safe? Is there no other hope? Give me a few minutes and let's find out together. Hello, I'm Mardax and as always I want to showcase you another less known title that might just become your next favorite game. If this video helps you discover something new, consider subscribing to my channel for more content like this. Many people compare Terminus to Project Zomboid, and while two games share some similarities, Project Zomboid was likely only a part of the inspiration for Terminus. There are plenty of differences between the two. After selecting your class, allocating points to attributes and choosing available perks, you can pick the game mode you want to play. The standard mode has you aiming to reach a place called Terminus, your only hope. Together you must scavenge essential resources, food, weapons, tools and more, while avoiding death. The closer you get to your goal, the more enemies you will encounter. The game starts with the outbreak happening far from your location, but as you move closer to the city center, you will meet more twisted monsters that were once your neighbors. There are a few different ways to escape the outbreak. While Terminus is the default option, choosing another road will give you a different ending. When you start the game, only the nearest unknown location and exclamation marks indicating dungeon zones are visible on the map. To find Terminus, you need to locate a working radio that lets you listen to broadcast of the Terminus location and other important information. I won't spoil what Terminus looks like or what it actually is, that's for you to discover. However, you can only listen to the broadcast if you have a fully functioning and charged radio. You don't know what the people at Terminus are, if the broadcast is fake or if Terminus has already fallen to the infected. All you know is where it's located, again assuming you have a working radio. As you get closer to Terminus, you will receive more information such as details about supplies left nearby or which roads to avoid. Once you reach Terminus, there is no more mystery. I don't want to build unnecessary tension, but I also don't want to ruin the fun for you. The Terminus ending is a part of scenario called Sanctuary, but there are other ways to complete the game, including creating a vaccine for the zombie outbreak. Terminus is turn-based. Your character has a limited amount of action points that allow you to perform various actions with each turn. However, the action point system isn't perfect. Every movement costs AP and more weight you carry, the higher the AP cost. AP is also used for activities like searching for nutrients, breaking them down for resources, crafting items, reading books, cooking and more. Some aspects of IP system feel strange. For example, carrying a medium heavy backpack might cost you 1.6 AP per move, while cooking vegetables can cost you 2 AP. This implies that one move with a medium weight backpack is almost equivalent to cooking which seems unrealistic, better dishes can cost you 3 AP, so in this scenario cooking takes as much effort as moving one space. Despite this, it's a still a game and I'd like to see better balance in the AP system. Once your AP runs out or you don't want it to use anymore, you can end your turn and then it's the zombie's turn. They also move on a grid like you, they have a limited number of moves based on their type. When your turn starts again, you gain a new set of AP. The amount of AP you receive each turn depends on various factors, your character's morale, hydration, nutrition, health and fatigue level. It's important to note that only portion of your AP is wasted if you don't use them. Let's say your character has a maximum pool of 20 AP and you currently have 6 AP left. In the next turn you will gain 12 more giving you a total of 18 AP. However, if you end your turn again, you will only gain 2 AP, as your maximum is capped at 20. I know that's a lot of talk about action points, but even if you don't want to use them, try to spend your AP on something productive, like reading books or magazines. Don't waste your points, especially at night. From my understanding, the game starts in autumn, where you have daylight from 6 am to 8 pm, and then it's naturally turns to night. Nighttime can be quite frustrating as you can't see much around you. You can use a flashlight if you have one or start a fire if you have the tools, but your vision will still be limited. Have you ever been in a place outside where the only light sources was the moon? I used to live in a small town in Europe and sometimes I do walk home from a nearby village. Believe me, night isn't pitch black, especially under a full moon you can use a flashlight but the way it functions in the game annoyed me. 
you have to charge it and with each turn you need to go into your backpack and turn it on again. This process repeats every turn, as the game counts how many times you have used it and how much battery you have left. In short, walking at night is more dangerous and problematic than it should be. I often try to reach a safe place before nightfall, clear the area as much as possible and then rest because of how night works. I'd cover the windows with rugs to keep unwanted visitors away, find the safest spot I could and sleep until my energy bar was filled. Sometimes my character didn't need much sleep or because all his needs were met, he would regenerate energy faster. In these cases I'd spend the night cooking, crafting or reading books to use up my AP. Occasionally enemies will try to break in, despite my effort to hide and cover the windows. It's a random event, once they break the doors or windows nothing stops them from entering. You can cover the windows again to block their vision, but it won't stop them from getting in. Once the doors are broken the room can get colder if the outside temperature is lower than inside. If you don't have clothes to keep warm, your character could catch a disease, which you will definitely want to avoid. If that happens, you will have to try your luck finding medicine in houses or hope there is something useful in pharmacy. Another aspect of the game is visiting different locations. You start with a city map where you can see locations you've encountered, visited or learned about from magazines. When you enter a new location, more paths are marked as unknown. If you find an item called street map, you can use your AP to reveal what's there. To move to another location, you need to move your character to one of the arrows on the edge of the map and then spend the required amount of AP. I don't understand why it's so expensive in terms of AP and why it slows down the gameplay so much. There is another option to move between locations, using a car. Once you find a car with a gas, you can fix it and use it to travel or you can siphon the gas from another vehicle. Different cars have different fuel consumption rates, but they are the quickest way to reach Terminus. Of course, you will need to know where Terminus is in the first place and how to connect your current location to it. As you can see, AP points are crucial and managing them well can be the difference between life and death. They are also important for another reason. For every action point spent, you gain XP. Leveling up allows you to acquire new perks or upgrade your class main perk. Another critical aspect of the game is combat. If you are playing as a soldier in your first run, combat will be easier, but only because of the soldier's perk that boosts your attack damage. To kill a zombie, you must destroy its head. You simply choose your weapon and then target the enemy's head, body or legs. Some zombies wear helmets or have some form of head protection. If your character isn't a skilled fighter or you have a weak weapon, you can try to cutting off their legs and arms, leaving just the head. It might not be ethical, or in line with uh, zombie rights, but it's effective. The zombie won't be able to do anything anymore. You can even pick up their heads, though I'm not sure for what. Some zombies are special, like tough zombies, runners and fat ones. Fat zombies have more health than the typical enemy, but as rewards, they sometimes drop food, like canned goods or snacks. Let's pretend we don't know why. Or sometimes their guts. You can collect this and use them in two ways to create a smelly bucket to place in windows or doors to repel curious zombies or go full the walking dead mode and create a poncho that masks your scent allowing you to move around zombies unnoticed. You can also upgrade some of your weapons like adding nails to a baseball bat and craft new ones. Combat also requires action points, so don't engage zombies unprepared. They can deal significant damage causing bleeding and, and inflict infections. The 1.0 version of the game has a slightly improved art style, but it still remains true to its original vision. The game features a top-down view with basic pixel art design, keeping the visual clean and the game lightweight. It's easy to identify who is who, where the enemies are and what's happening on the screen. It's good, but nothing more. The audio, however, is unbalanced. Some sounds are louder than others, but there is a nice ambient feel to the game. Strangely, the music during nighttime changes to battle music for the entire night, which I don't quite understand. Even when nothing is happening on the screen, you get this intense combat ready soundtrack. I'd like to hear more sounds and effects like sleeping noises, zombie crawling or mumbling and other immersive details. Despite the minor issues I'd like to see improved, Terminus is a very promising game, it kept me hooked for hours and even when I was tired, I kept pushing forward determining to reach Terminus. The game gets progressively harder as you get closer to your goal, which made it a real challenge, but I still wanted to see it through. The turn-based system and top-down view set the game apart 
from Project Zomboid, as does the ability to actually survive and finish the game. I hope the developers tweak a few things like the AP costs for moving to different locations or the cost of wall. I also appreciate that many tasks in the game are manual. You need to find a radio, fix it with a screwdriver if it's broken and then charge it. This attention to detail enhances the feeling that Terminus is a true zombie survival simulator. Reading books can give you perks and stats upgrades, which I also enjoy. If you wanted to check out the game for yourself, be sure to look in the description for a link. And if you'd like more videos about lesser known indie games, don't forget to subscribe! See you next time!